Hey Flight Sun folks, uh, Aaron here and I have a special guest for you today uh, or tonight depending on what part of the world you're in. Um, I have been uh, keeping an eye on this guy for a while. He's a aviation photographer. You can see a quick shot of him there um, and has some amazing photos. Um, he's shared quite a few of them in his Fight Song group with us, uh, in my Fight Song group with you, which is awesome. But if you go and check out his Facebook page and his um, business page, you'll see lots more. So I thought I'd reach out and invite him on for a chat because if you can't fly in the damn things, at least if you can take some awesome photos of them, then that's the next best thing you can do. So welcome, Keda. Hello, Aaron. And now you're in San Jose in California, correct? Yep. Yeah. But, but obviously from your accent, you didn't, uh, you didn't start there. <laughs> so where did you start from originally? Yeah, so I am from uh, Mumbai, uh, India, originally. Mm -hmm. uh, and then yeah, I moved to San Jose back in 1999, uh, you know, for the job stuff. And then, yeah, I've been here since. Yeah. And you're in the IT industry working for Cisco, is that correct? Yes, yeah. Yeah, but you have a, a, a side hobby, I suppose we could say, of aviation photography? Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So how did you actually get into that? Because that's, I mean, it's not something that anyone can just pick up a camera and walk into a, an Air Force or a Navy base and start taking photos easily. How did you manage that? Yeah, so I like, I, I had this, uh, like I grew up, uh, when I was back in Mumbai, I grew up with like the Commando Comics. And, uh, you know, I don't know, like, I, I guess, you know, God put me that uh, a module in my brain for aviation, or especially like the, the military types. So I always had a fascination for, you know, the World War Two battles, you know, Battle of Britain and, you know, the German advance and all that. So I was like a, a really lot into, you know, those commando comics and then, you know, reading about World War Two, you know, army, you know, military, Navy stuff, you know, the, the, the different theaters. So I went in, like plan A was to join the Air Force, the Indian Air Force. Uh, so that didn't pan out. And then, uh, you know, I, I joined the, the IT industry. And uh, as part of that came to, uh, you know, San Jose, where uh, the initial apartment uh, was on the flight path of Moffett Airfield, where all the, the 129 rescue wing guys, the, you know, the Pavehawks and then the C-130 Hercules uh, aircraft they used to kind of, you know, uh, bounce in the pattern. So I had a base, you know, kind of next to me. And then I think I, yeah, I came in uh, May and then uh, we had a air show uh, in Moffat in, I think, June or July timeframe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I went there, I was like a, like a kid in a candy store because <laughs> here were all F-15s, F-16s, F-18s, and all the stuff that I had read about uh, when, when I was a kid. And it's all out there, you know, I can, you know, touch it, I can speak to the crew and all those things. And it was just awesome. And so initially, like photography did not start off right there. Uh, uh, but then I think I had a, a, a Minolta camera. And again, I didn't, I did not have any knowledge about, you know, photography, camera, you know, again, auto, you know, the, the P mode or whatever it is, you know, that's your best friend. And I was just clicking it. So in fact, if you see my first uh, uh, clicks, it's like all frozen props and, you know, all that stuff, right? So, <laughs> but yeah. literally like with, with, with the whole internet and all that stuff, uh, there was a forum called fencecheck.com uh, long time back, like back in 99, 2000, you know, those times. And that's where I kind of, you know, learned about the other stuff and, uh, you know, how, how others are, you know, taking photographs. And then there was a whole lot of sharing going on at that time, uh, where I actually picked up some of the, some of the techniques of, uh, you know, shooting different, you know, different planes, proper planes, jet planes and all that stuff. And then eventually like, uh, yeah, like I, I had my, I, I, got a book and then in 2004, I got my, no, not in 2004, 2003, I got my first digital camera. And that's, I think that was the starting point. I, I, I actually learned uh, what's, you know, aperture priority, what is shutter priority, exposure, and you know, how can I manipulate light, you know, using the different settings and all that. And that's how I learned. And then with, with fence check and all that, you know, uh, a lot of sharing. 
uh, kind of you know picked up on that one and then that's how i kind of started attending air shows uh, a lot and yeah that's when it actually took off so 2005 2006 i got a dslr and then a couple of friends uh, on fincheck uh, glen blur and uh, uh, larry grace who's kind of the uh, the isap uh, top guy right now uh, they were kind of like my mentoring figures if you will at that point of time you know they kind of shared camera gear uh, you know stuff and then processing techniques because that's where i learned that in the digital world it's you know composing the shot is half the battle one and then actually processing it is the next half of the battle so i kind of it was, it was a huge learning curve you know uh, it, it was not like overnight that i got into everything yeah i i, I know for myself um you know, when I first started doing any kind of photography and I'm, I don't even own a DSLR, I just use my phone these days, but, you know, coming from the days of film where you had like 12 or 24 or 36 shots <laughs> and you couldn't screw it up or you do, it cost you money to take a photo basically. Yeah. Um, and then moving across to digital, I remember my first digital camera was, a, I think it was an Agfa and it took 640 by 480 resolution pictures, which at the time seemed ridiculously huge, but now are pathetically, un, yeah, I mean, digital is just a game changer as far as that goes. Yeah, yeah. And then just to add it, right, I add on top of that, like when I was a kid, um, I was a lone child of my parents, but they, they supported me like totally, you know, going, you know, my dream of joining the Air Force. So. Uh, they were kind of, you know, uh, always incentivizing me with, you know, okay, if you get this much marks in your, you know, in your studies, then we get like two books on whatever World War Two or, yeah. you know, aircraft and all that stuff. So uh, my parents and my uncle, especially, I remember him giving me a, a book about the Hornet, the Salamander series mm -hmm. uh, from design to deployment. So I was kind of a, a bit of a geeky guy as well, you know, trying to get all the, the, the weapon systems and all that stuff. But yeah, and then after I came here, uh, like normally what happens is for people that I've seen is uh, when they get married, you know, kind of stuff stops for them, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> but for me, it was actually the opposite. Like, and I got married, you know, and then my wife kind of realized that I have this, uh, you wouldn't, uh, she doesn't call it passion. She calls it like obsession. Yeah. Uh, with all the, 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 the flying stuff and all that. So she kind of like, she is very generous in, in, you know, giving me the, the time to get away from her and, you know, chase my first love, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, my partner hasn't quite got to that point yet. She still doesn't quite understand all the plain stuff, but <laughs> it is what it is. So you're a lucky man. If you've got a wife like that, I, that's all I can say. <laughs> yes. I am. I am extremely lucky from, from that side, at least from the home ministry side, if you will. Right. <laughs> Uh, what's the old saying? She who must be evade, as they call it. <laughs> so, so um, obviously you um, you you got better at it. Um, how did you um, like? Was it just your connections with the other people that um, kind of got you into different places to start taking photos, or what sort of helped you grow your career career on that side of things? Yeah. So initially it was just air shows, and uh, it was kind of local air shows. Like Salinas was one. Uh, San Francisco Fleet Week was the other one that I used to go to. Uh, and then Moffat dropped out of the radar. And then I used to go to like with the Fence Check Forum. Uh, there was a whole lot of, you know, awareness of what other air shows are going on, which acts are, you know, going to come there. Yeah. So that way I kind of, you know, with like, especially Fence Check was, was a huge factor in, in me kind of growing. And then uh, after air shows, it was like those arranged, uh, what they call photo calls these mm -hmm. days. So as part of Fence Check, I remember going to uh, NAF uh, El Centro, uh, where they had the first uh, organized shoot. We were like seven of us. And like, you know, compared to like right now, where almost like 200 people show up for the photo call. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, that was one. Then Lemur was another. Then we went to Fallon, I think. So, and then that kind of like shifted the focus a bit from like, I used to do a lot of air shows and then it was kind of the, the same acts everywhere, different lighting, but it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So then I started like kind of getting intrigued by uh, base visits uh, and, and photo calls. And that's how I kind of like got into that one. Uh, 2008 uh, Quebec uh, air show uh, that I went to with, with a couple of uh, guys from here. And then I met uh, Eric uh, Kekelberg's uh, who runs the, uh, the, the Belgian uh, crew, the, aviation photo crew right now. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So that's where I met him, uh, and then uh, 2010, you know, he emailed me about, hey, how about doing air to air, and uh, um, okay. that's how I kind of, you know, got got to like know people, and then through people, uh, you know, whatever that, that they're doing, you know, then kind of, you know, going on to those kind of trips, and uh, so 2011 was my first air to air with those guys, right? And uh, yeah, and air to air is, is kind of like a drug. <laughs> and you know, then, <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like once you get it, then you know, then it's that like gets... you get all the withdrawal symptoms. You know, shaky hand and like you know, like itchy fingers. Like no, I have, I have to do it. Yeah. But yeah, so that, that's like a whole different world. And then that's how I kind of like from there. Uh, there was Scott Slocum uh, locally who was doing things. So that's how I got into the warbird scene, because uh, warbirds and the military was kind of my 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 two subjects, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I and I think I've seen you mention Scott's uh, name quite regularly with stuff that you've done. So, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So I have done a lot of stuff with them. Yeah. Yeah, and and are you mostly air to air nowadays, or do you still do a bit of a mix of ground and air stuff? Yeah, it's still a mix. Uh, yeah, I still like I I I kind of like to say that I I, uh, I am firmly rooted to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I don't just fly in there, so. Like yeah. Uh, I think yeah. Like last, uh, like in fact, no, no. Even the start of this year, uh, I had. Uh, I think in January I went to Hawaii for the Century Aloha exercise that the 18th aggressors had with the Raptors and the Eagles, uh, the Fresno guys, uh, you know, Air National Guard. So that was his ground. Uh, and then uh, Red Flag. I think a couple of days I was there. The 2020 01 and 02. Okay. And. Uh, yeah, like uh, I went to Alaska last year in December uh, at Ilsen and uh, it's, it's kind of crazy. Like, like no one goes to Alaska in December. People are kind of getting away from Alaska, but I kind of went there and <laughs> but it was beautiful. Like the light, uh, like it's it was sunset at 2.30 in the afternoon. Yeah, wow. And sunrise at like what, 10.30ish or something like that. But the light was beautiful. I got some great shots from, from you know, uh, from, from that trip. So... Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a mix of air to air and, and ground. Yeah. And so with your photos, what do you do with them? Do you mostly, uh, do you sell them or do people hire you to take photos for them or how does how does that side of things work? Yeah, so right now, uh, my photos are kind of lying on my on my hard drive and then, you know, sh- mostly sharing on, on Facebook or, you know, Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, sometimes like I'll create books and all that stuff. So recently I created that uh, the book with uh, called Things with Wings, you know, you know, part one, yeah. uh, where I, you know, try to put a, uh, some photographs in and I try to get some background story on, you know, uh, how, how that, you know, that photo, you know, happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but, and then uh, uh, lately again, uh, I do contribute to, you know, magazines like Combat Aircraft, uh, Air Forces Monthly, and then uh, just uh, today, in fact, today morning when I got up, um, I uh, I saw the, the cover of Spotter magazine uh, where they had used the the MiG-17 shot on, on the cover. Yeah, and, I, uh, actually, I might, if you don't mind, I might share the screen and show that. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, just no, so no people worries. can see it. Um, yeah, where was it? So I think it was this one. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was one. Yeah, beautiful. So that's that uh, red MiG uh, 15 or 17? 17. 17, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's awesome. And it's a cool looking plane. I love that color on it. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, it's, it's now owned by Jason Soames uh, of uh, High Alpha Air Shows, but mm-hmm. it used to be the, uh, the, um, the Red Bull uh, MiG 17 flown uh, by uh, okay. uh, uh, Reisman. Yeah. Cool. Let's see if we've got any other interesting photos here. I always love your, your Viper photos. You, you get some really amazing ones with some amazing colors, like things yeah, like, like that. The, the, yeah, exactly. Like, see if you can see the, uh, the hangar wall uh, being painted by, like, just mellow, you know, sunset light. Yeah. And that was at, like, 2.30 when they were taxing out to tangle with the raptors of Third Wing from J-Bear. Yeah. But, yeah, it was just beautiful light uh, at Ilson. Mm, yeah. And I love those um, those funky aggressor colors that you often see on them. Oh yeah, I, I like the aggressor guys. You know, it's 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 a different uh, you know color than the, the normal you know drab mm. gray or yeah. the water. Yeah, a bit of brightness there. So 
Yeah. So th this one, now I've seen a lot of these recently. This is the uh, the Oscar. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Oh yeah, sure. So uh, this is the world's only flying uh, example uh, of the Nakajima KI-43 uh, Oscar. Uh, or Japanese called it Hayabusa and then the allied name was Oscar. Uh, but yeah, like uh, the Ericsson aircraft collection up at uh, Madras, uh, Oregon, they have this thing uh, flying with them. And uh, this was on a recent trip. Uh, again, I was uh, flying out of the SBD Dauntless uh, on, uh, on this uh, hop. And it was uh, it was pretty uh, a different experience, uh, but a great but a great experience like you know flying in in, in a warbird you know taking a photo of uh, another warbird, and then especially yeah. uh, with with Madras like they have the the Mount uh, Jefferson which is there right now, uh, and then uh, there are those uh, three sisters they call it like it's three uh, mountain peaks, so mm -hmm. they have got like lots of different you know um, uh, landscape like they have got kind of a desert kind of landscape and then the mountain tops and all that yeah. that kind of you know, creates, uh, you know, a different stuff, you know, different backgrounds uh, for, yeah. for the shot. So, yeah, there I was, you know, uh, I think I was, uh, yeah, I was uh, up in that cold air because it's it's the bad, the, the cockpit is open and the air is rushing around. And then we had some uh, communication issues with the, with the mic and all that stuff. So while we were flying to join up with, uh, and that's, uh, I think, uh, yeah, that's Jim Martinelli who was flying it. And while we were en route, I was, because of the whole communications and all that, I, I anticipated some of the problems. And I was literally practicing, you know, my hand signals, like, okay, how am I going to tell them, you know, <laughs> go here or, you know, go here or, you know, go down, you know, go down, you know, five, you know, five, five or 15 or, you know, whatever. So yeah. I was literally practicing that on the way. Yeah. And and I and I read this. You said you were in a Dauntless, and I didn't realize that you meant like a real live World War Two Dauntless. That's what you're saying there. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. How the and, heck and did you manage the, that? <laughs> uh, yeah. So the, they have a SBD Dauntless, and uh, I think last year some of the guys who went there uh, they shot out of the Dauntless, and you know I was like, okay, fine, you know, I'll, I'll I'll go for once, you know, one hop just to get the experience. But then it was an awesome experience because. On, on the way back, when we were coming back, uh, we uh, David Reed, who's the, who was flying me, uh, was flying the Dauntless. He said, "Yeah, let's let's you know go into that dive that you know that the SBD Dauntless is famous for." Yeah. yeah. So there we were, like up at you know uh, over the uh, airport of Madras, you know dive bombing uh, the the airport. You know, we, we literally <laughs> it was it was an awesome feeling. Like you yeah. are almost like almost what a seventy degree down, you know uh, nose you know nose down angle. Yeah. And but with the dive brakes when they come on, you are just kind of hanging there. Oh, and my God. I could actually visualize I'm like, holy crap, you know, like people did this actually in World War Two. And they were being shot know, at the same time. Yeah, and, and they are being shot at at the same time. And I'm like, Yeah, yeah that's you know, you require, you know, literally, you know, brass ones or platinum <laughs> ones or you know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> you know, I, I, just to go through that. What what was that movie that came out recently about um, the Japanese um, uh, with the Dauntlesses were trying to kill off all the Japanese carriers? I can't remember the name of it. The, the Midway. Is yeah, that... Midway. So yeah, Midway, yeah. I, I happened to catch the movie recently. Um, and although I didn't like some of the, the cartoony kind of scenes in the beginning, which looked a bit kitschy, um, mm. the, some of the Dauntless stuff was pretty cool. And yeah, to get in one of those things and do that, Oh yeah, like 100 Japanese gunners trying to kill you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pretty like I, I was stuff. trying to see if I could get like a, a GoPro or something, but like I, I don't carry, like I'm I'm dyslexic with video. So okay. I was like, yeah, that's fine, you know, maybe another time. But it was, it was an, a fantastic experience, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And it's an unusual complaint. So and what do we got here? We got a, what is it, B-25 Mitchell? Yep. yep. Yeah. You're that was, very, that was very that was close to them. Or is that just a good zoom lens? Yeah, it's a good zoom lens. So like I, I carry like a 24, 120 on a full frame and then 8400 on the on, on the crop frame. Mm -hmm. So that way I get like everything from like 24 to almost like 600. Yeah, yeah. I, it's a question for you. I've, I've noticed that some of these older planes, I assume that's not the real gun or have they just removed the firing pin and left the gun in there or what's yeah, the story yeah. there? They, they, yeah, they, they remove it like, uh, uh, most of the times they will remove the firing pin, uh, okay. and you know, but it's the yeah the the real thing in there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah.
Now this one's uh, uh this is an amazing one. So this is what yeah. one hundred and nine ME one hundred and nine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a BF one hundred and nine G Gustav, and this yep. was I think of the the Military Aviation Museum uh, on the East Coast in Virginia Beach. Okay. Where yeah, Michael Spalding was was flying that uh, at around sunset time frame. Yeah. And then I just kind of like you know I I, I process this picture and I'm like oh, maybe a black and white can you know can uh, you know let's try a black and white. Mm -hmm. And I actually like that result, so you know I kind of posted that one. Well, it's kind of reminiscent of the old World War Two stuff, where they, that's all they mostly it was all black mm -hmm. and white photography anyway. So yeah. Yep. Exactly. exactly. And then there's a there's a very close up color one. <laughs> so. I, I kind of like the close up one, and that's why like uh, uh, I think I I don't know which year it was. I think it was 2016 or something. I um, mean, I just come back from from Belgium. And I I am into like you know up close and personal stuff like in your face kind of shots, so I had I had posted some of those shots and then uh, I think we were up in uh, or we were down in Dallas or Houston uh, some one of those places mm -hmm. and we were just sitting there and then you know someone brought up that I like hey like this is like kind of in your face and someone said yeah that that might be a kind of like your call sign and then uh, yeah. Steve Zimmerman who's another you know uh, photographer. He's like, no, FaceTime, you know, in your face sounds kind of crude, but like FaceTime, you know, that's, that's your call sign from today. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. You could be called worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and of course the old Fokker Wolf. Yep. So, yeah. Do you know, I, 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 the first time I saw a picture of this, because it had the four blade prop on it, it was quite distinctive. Um, really made it stand out, but it was such a beautiful looking plane. I don't know if I let's see if I can find the original one you had. I know I'm, uh, I I'm doing horrible uh, things jumping through there, but anyway, <laughs> I'll, I'll get it off to you. Uh, look, I think it's a, uh, it's a beautiful photo. Oh, yeah, yeah. In yeah. fact, uh, there's a joke on this one. Uh, when I when I first went to Madras, uh, they had their air show of the cascades or whatever I think uh, they call it. And we were taking off with the with the Fock Wolf and the P fifty one, and uh, I was in Scott's plane, and then we took off, and then the P fifty one took off, the Fock Wolf took off, and the air boss called up Scott saying, "Hey, uh, what was that? Uh, what is the name of the German plane that that took off right now?" And Scott said, uh, "Yeah, that is a, a Fock Wolf F W one ninety," and the air boss goes on the frequency is like. Yeah, I think I'll just call it F F W one nine. Yes, I think I've more than a few people have um, been cautious of that one. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to call this, you know, on the air show, like a yeah. pop hole. Like, what did he say? <laughs> yes, no, it's very nice. So. And of course the Raptor. So what's it like? I've never, I mean, you know what it's like. I live in a, in Perth and Western Australia, which you've been to it. It's like the most isolated city on the planet. Just about. We don't mm -hmm. ever get things like the Raptors down, down our way. What, what, what are they like up close? Oh, those are beautiful machines. Like I, I just like the, the, the Raptor. Uh, it's just the way, uh, you know, it, it kind of looks, uh, the, the, uh, the one thing that I found out, uh, when I actually visited, um, uh, Avalon uh, in 2019. Yeah, and, um, and for those of th those who don't know, Avalon's an air show in uh, the east coast of Australia. Is that correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's near Melbourne. Yeah, uh, right. And yeah, and then um, so the one thing that I that I really kind of you know uh, just uh, noticed was the huge uh, the horizontal stabilizer. Mm -hmm. Those are like massive in size and, you know, they are just, you know, like I have a shot of the, uh, like a, a head on shot with the, uh, with the stabs kind of deflected when he was doing the pre-flight yeah. and there's actually a ground crew there and you can just easily make the, the, the difference between the size of the stabilizer and, and the normal, you know, uh, you know, human being. And yeah, so yeah it's, it's just massive and plus it's, it's kind of like the, the air superiority fighter. Mm -hmm. So you know, just, just into fighting stuff, right? Like not, not into air to ground, but I think recently they have done some hops with, uh, with air to ground, uh, in the Middle oh, East. Interesting. Yeah. I, yeah. I, look, you got, I got to say, this is just a personal opinion. Some people will disagree with me, but if you compare the, the look only of the F-22 with the F-35, the F-35 is an extremely ugly plane and the Raptor is an extremely beautiful plane. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, the F uh, the F thirty five like from the like if you just look at it from the side, yeah, it it does look like a like a toy or like uh, it's, just, it's a bit ungainly. It doesn't look like a fighter. Mm. Uh, but then it has its views. Like if you especially look at it from the front uh, or or a front forty five degree angle, then it does have its kind of you know it does have its nicer yeah. sides. Uh, I, I, I have right seen hand. a photo on Facebook ages ago. Someone took of one face on and it did mm -hmm. look really cool. Like it was the first time I yeah. looked at one and said, oh, that looks all right. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, well, I suppose they don't make, get any branding points for being good looking as long as they kill the bad guys. That's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. exactly. What do we got here? And of course, back to my, this is my second favorite plane. The, the Well, I still call it the Falcon or the Fighting Falcon, even though everyone calls it the Viper these days. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and especially I like the Agrisa guys, uh, you know, so yeah. yeah, they just have those funky paint schemes on it and it's, it's actually cool looking. Yep, yep. Um, then there's, uh, what's this, a Rhino? Um, yeah, the Echo uh, Super Hornet. Yep. Of course, another. Uh, yeah, from the low level. That that's that's your more typical grey color, as you say, your boring grey. Yeah, that's in, in fact this is still the the half glass uh, scheme that that they have applied here, uh, which is mm -hmm. kind of reducing the the the, the radar cross section uh, of the the Viper. Okay. So it, yeah, it's still different than the normal drab, you know, grey ones. Yeah, there's a um, there's a uh, an, uh, a base command uh, somewhere on Facebook who sh what's that? They, they had a Viper. They ran a competition to come up with a paint scheme for it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the ghost. Uh, ghost. Like yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Have you um have you seen that and photographed that? Oh yeah, yeah. I've I've done uh, especially a, a night shoot with that with, with the ghost. I yeah. kind of like the ghost uh, better than the than the than the the more recent one, which was that they call it the Wraith. Uh, which yep. is a all black and and red, you know, kind of stenciling on it. Yep. I kind of I I don't like that. It's uh, the, the ghost is much more, you know. I kind of like the ghost scheme mm, better yeah. than, the, than the. I've I've seen a few shots like that. It's almost like um, image pixelation on a computer, and I've seen one of the, and then I've seen some SU twenty sevens. I think that I've got similar sort of patterns on them as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, Especially, I think uh, what they call the the felon. This the what is that the the Sukhoi. 57 or whatever they call it. The, or the, uh, um, the SU-57, yeah, no, the one you mean. Yeah, the PACFA or whatever, right? Uh, yeah. That has those, that go scheme. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's a there's a bit of an old, old, old plane. You want to tell yeah. people a bit about that the, one? The Magister. <laughs> That's um, yeah. French from memory. Yes, and then uh, I think, uh, uh, I don't know, like he has got this Uber uh, symbol up there <laughs> in, in the back of the canopy. Oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> I have to put my glasses on. I can't see. He's yeah, got, like, he's got he's, something there. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, dear. There How about that for the Uber ride? <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, and this one. I think I just saw this one recently. So. Yeah, that was a Battle of Britain. Yeah. Uh, Who doesn't love the spit, Spitfire and a Hurricane? Mm -hmm. the, so. the, the the legendary duo, right? Yeah. Exactly. I know um, when I was talking to Paco, he said one of his dreams was if he could go back in time and fly a Spitfire in the Battle of Britain, he said that'd be a, a dream come true. So yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I like the Spit as well. Like it's, it's really got like really clean lines, mm. and it, it just looks awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful plane. So, mm -hmm. um, so look, I wonder. One of the things I want to ask you about. I'll um stop the screen sharing if you hang on a minute. So we'll go back to that sure. there. So um. I wanted to ask you about three uh, some some of your photo shoots. I know you and I talked a little bit ahead of time about three that we were going to discuss. Um, right. Now I've got um, one photo from each to show people, but you're going to send me some more photos, which I'll edit in later on. So sure. um, yeah, I'll yeah. just get it. So do you want to take us through those three uh, and tell me which one it is, and I'll work, I'll get the photo yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, sure. So we can we can talk about the F86 first. Yep. All right. Let me just. Um, open the photo and do a screen share sure. on that one for people. Where is my zoom controls gone? There we go. So, okay. So go for it. Tell us a bit about that and I'll turn this off in a second. Go back to you. Yeah. So again, uh, this was like a, a, a recent uh, photo shoot with uh, Steve Hinton senior. 
and uh, like i i haven't interacted you know uh, much with steve uh, but i've kind of like uh, i think a couple of occasions where he was like standing like kind of next to me uh, but he's a super cool guy and he just like flies the saber like i don't know it uh, especially uh, the recent hop i remember i was uh, uh, i was sitting on the on the floor on on the beach baron that scott was flying and uh, matt booty who's another uh, photographer up in seattle he was there with me and he was kind of sitting so he he could look outside the the other window and he could see what's going on on the left side of the plane and i had the the vision you know uh, looking on the, on the at the uh, right side of the plane mm-hmm. and normally what happens like when in, in the join up is like these guys like if you are flying like that these guys will come you know kind of like that and then kind of you know ease over yeah uh, or sometimes they will just kind of you know uh, gently come up and then just you know park their plane mm-hmm. but this time like i i was blind on you know what's happening on the left hand side and he basically like we were flying like this and steve actually he came from the left and he actually came and just parked the plane right right there and when it actually happened uh, i was like okay where is he where is he and then suddenly i see this you know saver just pop up and literally like he just parked like right there as if you know you you park a car in a in a in a grocery parking lot or something yeah and literally like i was like whoa <laughs> like but it was awesome like yeah. that that join up has been like etched in my memory right now like and then if you can if you can zoom on the like if you can not even zoom like if you can just uh, display the uh, photo again yeah. you can see the uh, the reflection of the beach baron in in the nose in the front part of the nose it's, it's a right. very shiny looking saber hang on a minute i'll just get that yeah and i'll just go full screen so somewhere yeah, see, there yep, th- yep there it is uh, okay, okay. Cool. So that's where the, the the beach baron was, and he was like, yeah, he was he was comfortable, he was comfortable, you know, being close, but it was just an awesome join up. I, I just love that the way he joined up, mm. and after that, like he, you know, it, it's it's Steve Hinton Senior, so you know, uh, he just like parked the plane wherever we wanted it. Uh, it was just a a great shoot at you know sunset. It yeah. was awesome. I've um I recently ran across some videos on YouTube with him uh, I think he was from an aviation museum he's involved with where he was walking over right. the saber and talking us through it so yeah I mean it's a beautiful oh, plane. You know that's the same shoot that we were Oh in. okay. Oh ah, there. Yeah. Go. Like and uh, like from his angle from his whatever the, the video angle that he has it it looks as if it's it's very normal. Uh, it doesn't look any you know dramatic but mm. it was just awesome for us on the other side. you know and especially for me because i was expecting him like to, to see him some sometime you know somewhere in the back or you know as he kind of you know gently joined but he just popped out right there and yeah it was just awesome the, this is a good example of the uh in your face type shot you were talking about earlier <laughs> <laughs> this is more kind of the, the hero shot you know uh, focusing yeah. more on on the pilot yeah but yeah it was it was it was awesome like it, it's like some of those shoots kind of you know the kind of stick in your brain right Yeah. Uh, so that's that's one of those, you know, the memorable ones. Yeah. Uh, for it, sure. Yeah. And I mean it's a beautiful plane, so. Oh, yeah. I, I love that like that polished metal basically. I mean there's essentially mm-hmm. no paint on it. It's not very uh um camouflage friendly, but it still looks amazing. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, it just looks amazing. Yeah. So yeah, that that was one. That was the the most recent. Okay. Uh yeah, so the like, All right. So, um and what's the what was the second shoot that you wanted to tell me about? So the second I think was of the the MiG, right? The MiG 17. Yeah. There we go. That one there. Yeah, and then that's the the cover shot from from the magazine. But yeah. It was just awesome like uh uh again this was uh I think uh end of April or end of March. I'm I'm not I'm not too sure, but somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. but again jason was kind of uh, kind enough to you know fly for us and uh, in fact i just love like because we were just like uh, like the two of us uh, me and matt and then uh, especially scott uh, he's got that uh, he calls it belly hole uh, but jason soms who's flying the mix 17 he calls it the booty hole <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually a, a hole in the floor of the of the beach baron right and uh, I, yeah i kind of had that idea like hey uh, since it's just you know two of us 
and we are going to come back to the airport anyways. Can we kind of, you know, drag the MiG-17 and, you know, can I get a shot over the runway, uh, you know, from, from that angle? And ah. sort of like, sure, we can do that. And yeah. uh, that was it. And the, the main thing uh, in, in this one, in, in especially this angle, is the, the compression effect that has. So if you are looking from, from there, and especially, you know, looking through the viewfinder, uh, and with the compression that's going on, uh, you feel that he's like really close to the ground. Mm. And uh, I didn't want him to go down like more further, uh, and all, because I'm like, he's, he's already like right there. But then uh, looking back, I saw someone uh, who took a video of like, as we kind of dragged the, the MiG uh, along the runway, and he was quite high. It was like just the, the compression factor that makes you feel that, yeah, he's like kind of, you know, right there on the, on the like really close to the runway. Mm, so it definitely but I kind like of that. like this angle and especially the, the runway numbers, you know, uh, it's, it's kind of a great, uh, yeah. great thing. And, yeah. and so those two shiny, they're what, smoke? Uh, smoke yeah, those are those, uh, I think, uh, what was it? The, the Sanders smoke generators that uh, the system that they have. Yeah. And uh, I think he got uh, he got it recently, you know, overhauled with those guys. He he works he worked closely with those guys to overhaul that system, uh, you know, to generate that smoke and all that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's 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 a beautiful bird, uh, you know. Yeah. And especially the red paint, uh, the red paint and all that. It's 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 awesome. Yep. Uh, especially the chrome on the nose. It's uh, it's it's beautiful. Mm. Although I I have to be honest, I'm not really a raging fan of some of those earlier MIGs. Um, but I remember when the guys, uh, when DCS bought out the MiG-19, that was the first time I actually thought about buying a, mm. a, a module like that. And um, right. and this one has got some similarities, obviously, but that color scheme is beautiful. It looks amazing. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's a great contrast. It kind of looks like great, uh, even in the sky, you know, even, even with the sky background, uh, even like with the, with the green uh, uh, hills, we thought that it might look a bit uh, like odd. But it, it, it's really a good contrast, uh, even with the green uh, or even with the sunset, you know, it's, it's just an awesome color. And, yeah. you know, he obviously he's, he's kept it, you know, uh, kept the flame awesome. And <laughs> he great polished and shined it a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially, exactly. Yeah, very yeah, nice. But, so how did this one happen? Was he already in the air and you just basically synchronized to be above him and you kept sort of yeah, uh, above yeah. the runway, basically? Yeah, so we went out over the, uh, like the, uh, and this was in Camarillo Airport. So it's kind of like right by the, the ocean. So we went out for, you know, the, uh, just kind of, you know, close to the waterline for, for the shoot, get some different angles, uh, different lightings. And then when, when we were headed, headed back, we were like, okay, let's, you know, let's, uh, we did some other stuff as well. And then as the airport was like two minutes away, we kind of got him into that position and then we just dragged him there, you know, over right. the runway and then he broke off and then yep. he landed. But yeah, I kind of like those shots as well. Yeah. Cause I was thinking if you'd, uh, if you'd have been filming him while he was taking off, that would have been an amazing synchronization of where everyone was. Oh yeah. Like I think they, they did some videos as well, uh, like in the afternoon um, and especially uh, when he engaged the afterburner, I think so they, they were trying to get the video as well. And, Okay. I think he's got some good footage as well, but again, I I'm not into video, and uh, and it was again using Scott's system. Uh, so Scott was uh, doing all those you know uh, funky things with the video, you know, trying to pan the video where he is and all that. Yeah. But yeah, like they have got some great video footage as well, which I think Jason is uh, building up the website right now, and then he might throw in you know all those things over there. Okay. Cool. But, yeah. All right, so we've got another photo to show. So let me just start that up again. So I'll just go to, looks like I have to go that way. So back. So this one, this oh, is yeah. a pretty, this is an amazing shot. So tell us about yeah. this. Yeah, so this was again lucky. Um, uh, especially like the, the background story to this is I was in, I think I was in Barcelona uh, the week I think I flew the week before Friday or Saturday, I think, uh, because the, uh, it was uh, Cisco Live Europe, which is my company's, you know, customer conference uh, and the, the, the European edition of the customer conference. And that was in Barcelona. So I was there from like, I think Saturday to Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, I think, yeah, I, I was there till, uh, till Wednesday, I think uh, over there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
my friend uh, who uh, commands one of the, the units uh, in Nellis, he had a change of command ceremony on Friday at nine o'clock, you know, in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I'm there in Barcelona. And then I, I, I didn't have any engagements on like Thursday or Friday. So I decided to come and like return on Thursday itself. So I get on a plane uh, in Barcelona time, like somewhere early in the morning, fly to Frankfurt, get a connection from Frankfurt to uh, San Francisco, land in San Francisco on like Thursday evening around like three o'clock or something. And it takes me like an hour, hour and a half, you know, with traffic and all that to get home. I get home, I throw my bag, get, a, get into a shower, shower up, change, you know, pack another bag, take my camera gear and I'm out the door, um, you know, going to San Jose airport to fly to Vegas. Mm-hmm. So on the same day, like I left Europe, <laughs> I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm bound for Vegas in the, in, in the evening. I landed at Vegas in the night and I just crashed uh, on, 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 you know, on Thursday night. And then uh, Friday morning, I went to his chain of command ceremony, did that stuff. And then it was just one day of, you know, uh, outside the, uh, the Nellis uh, Speedway, uh, where they had the red flag, uh, the 2020-01 edition that was going on, where a lot of, uh, I think, uh, uh, the, the Royal Air, uh, the RAAF, the RAF, um, and who was there? Yeah, I think only these two uh, guys were there. Mm-hmm. The Royal Air Force had got the, I think, a couple of typhoons and the dam busters, the F-35B. Yeah. from the 617 squadron. And then uh, you guys had Super Hornets and Growlers. Uh, okay. I think uh, number one and number six, right? I, I believe. Uh, uh, I'll have to say which ones they are now. Yeah, I think so. And then they had the, the B1B, which uh, again, I have not taken a shot of a B1 in, in a long, long time. The weather was gorgeous, as you can see. You know, mm. clear blue skies, great weather. And this shot just, just happened out of the blue where this bone came in first and then it was given a, a speedway break. Uh, and then it was in the, in the pattern while the growlers were coming and just to get the, you know, the, the whole length of the, of the bone, I, I was like, I was kind of wide angled. And yeah. that's when I just, you know, it, it was just a lucky shot. I didn't even see those guys coming in. Yeah. But yeah. So that was yeah. like a, a great shoot. Yeah. It's an amazing photo. So it's just, uh, I mean, I mean, what really intrigues me is the, this massive big wing with the, well, that's that a uh, spoiler? Mm-hmm. Am I, in my terminology yeah, correct? The front part, yeah. yeah, just that massive big wing with that thing hanging off the front of it. But, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And looks like a sniper pod on the bottom. Yep. yep. The sniper pod, yeah. Yeah. So, I, in fact, I learned a lot about the, the B1 when, when I heard uh, the, the Fighter Pilot podcast. Uh, oh, yeah, um, Fighter Pilot podcast, yeah. Yeah, the episode on that on, on, on the on the B one and that was like really uh, 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 I I got to know a lot from that episode as well, like how they use the B one, you know, how it flies and all that. So yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a great looking uh, bomber. It, it it's almost like a fighter. Mm. Uh, you know. It's um and it and it's not that young either. I mean, it's been around for a long time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So. I think uh, the the main thing about it is uh, like when it works, it works, but when it is down, like it's it's a it's a it's a pain uh, for maintenance. I think. Yeah, well, yeah, I can believe that. So. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Cool. All right. So um, there's some. Uh, now you're going to send me some more photos to put in the video, so people will get to see those. That's which is great. Appreciate that. Um, so I thought we'd uh, sort of end the the interview with. Um, I'm always fascinated to know what kind of planes people like, um, particularly on the military side. So from your perspective, what are your 10 favorite um, military aviation planes and why? Well, uh, I I would quote the the Top Gun dialogue here, uh, which might, I think, if uh, I think Zip is uh, listening to this, uh, Zip Papam, who's the public affairs at Fallon, I, I think I owe him a beer every time we, you know, quote something from Top Gun or something. <laughs> I've heard of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think uh, the, 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 the quote I would like to use here is the, the list is long, but distinguished. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can understand that. So yeah, like, yeah, like, 
uh, it's, it's, it's everything military that kind of intrigues me, right? Like, uh, if I start from the warbirds, uh, I, I grew up with, uh, you know, the Spitfire, the Hurricane, uh, the BF-109, BF-110, uh, you know, the, the FW-190s, the Stuka, right? Who can, who can forget the Stuka? Uh, and then uh, uh, Junkers 88s, uh, yeah. you know, and then even the, um, obviously the Lancaster, uh, the Henkel HE uh, Triple One, mm -hmm. you know, all those things, uh, they are just like awesome. Uh, the P40s, uh, especially uh, like when I, I, I remember still, uh, I was uh, reading up about the, the P40s in North Africa. I think it was the number 112 squadron, uh, which basically carried those shark mouth, uh, you know, uh, which was made yeah. famous by Flying Tigers. But yeah, so like I, I love those guys. Uh, like I think you, uh, the RF used to call it Kitty Hawk. Uh, yeah. the, the U.S. guys call it the Warhawk. Um, so, you know, those kind of like uh, all those era uh, of fighters uh, and bombers. And then coming to the, the modern age, like the jet age, uh, obviously, uh, like things like the, the MiG-17, the, the Sabre. Uh, but then uh, coming more later, it's obviously the F-4 Phantom, uh, F-14. Which, which are probably all perennial favorites at the best of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. I think the, the F4 Phantom is like someone said, it's, 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 uh, it's a demonstration of like, if you put two engines, uh, even a brick can fly or something like that. Right. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. just a brute force, you know, brute looking uh, aircraft. Yeah. Uh, the F14 is again, like just, just the, the, uh, the, the romance of fighter aviation. Right. Uh, immortalized by Top Gun. I think of course. Top Gun uh, I think inspired a whole lot of generation to be fighter pilots, I guess. <laughs> that yeah. movie. Yeah. And then sure. coming closer, yeah. it's like the MiG-21. Uh, that's kind of like the, the quintessential fighter. Uh, MiG-29, uh, just for the, the, the curves uh, it has. Um, uh, the F-16, uh, for the same reason, kind of like the, the, the canopy. Uh, and then the curves that it has. The F-15 Eagle, you know, that's kind of like the, again, the air superiority fighter out there, uh, the Raptor, and uh, what else? Uh, the the flankers, uh, and then uh, the especially the the I think uh, the the three things that I really came close uh, to to getting was uh, to getting them in my viewfinder was the I think the F one eleven, and I still yeah. kick myself in the in the butt for that because I think it was two thousand nine when. Uh, you guys brought them over for to like to Nellis for the red flag, and yeah. I was at work and I couldn't get away, and or maybe I was lazy. I guess I don't know, but I thought <laughs> you, yeah, did, I, I, you I, didn't I, know they were about to get rid of them. <laughs> exactly, and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll get them, you know, next time or whatever. And then I find out that they are retired. I'm like, oh crap, they were like in my proverbial backyard, and I and I yeah. didn't go. So I, I still keep, you know, I, I still regret, you know, that stuff. But then, I, I consider myself lucky to have seen a few in real life and seen them fly a couple of times. So yeah, like there's a there's another friend of mine who's in uh, Brisbane, and he uh, he actually has like uh, I think he dug up his uh, his swimming pool and he built a, a man cave in there. Yeah. And in in that man cave, he has like a full like a life size seven three seven simulator. Um, <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, and that one, then he's got a, a Bell uh, helicopter simulator on jigs and all that stuff. So it, it kind of moves and all that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he, uh, yeah, he had a sim an A10 simulator. Uh, he had a F16 simulator, which was down when I went a uh, couple of years back. And then he was working on the F18 simulator. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, like, so he used to tell me about those... Uh, uh, dump and burn uh, stuff that they used to do in uh, the Brisbane River, yeah. you know, flying up the skyscrapers and all that stuff. And I was like, ah, oh, man, that would have been a sight to watch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind of like, you know, miss that. But then the, the other thing is like uh, the Blackbird. You know, that's kind of my, my sexiest plane ever. Mm. Uh, even though it was just like, you know, used for, you know, reconnaissance and, you know, spying stuff and all that. But I would have loved to get that in my viewfinder. Yeah, it's a, it's a very unique and interesting plane, that's for sure. 
Yeah. I, yeah. I re regret the only photos I have of an F-111 are taken. Now, this is how old I'm, I'm showing my age here. It was on 126 photos. So there was a size, it wasn't 35 mil, it was a little Instamatic snap camera. And I think the photo size oh, yeah, was yeah. 126. So I have a few shots from a PS Air Force Base show I attended when I was, I don't know, maybe 17 or 18 or 19. Um, wow which were of an F-111, and then um, I think there was a couple of the Mirage 3 as well. So. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, but you guys had that, the That's all I got, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they haven't really had any. Like, I think the last air show, which I'm sure was yeah, when I went, they haven't had any since. So you have to go to the east coast mm -hmm. of Australia to get them, even though raft based Pierce, which is less than two hours drive from where I live, that's where all the training happens. Um, oh, okay. okay. They just... I, don't, I, I think it's a budget thing, unfortunately. Not a, so, not a, I, I was actually scheduled to fly to Melbourne, which is on the other side of Australia. You know that. Not everyone watching does. Yeah. I was scheduled to fly there in March to attend a wedding of a friend's, and I had scheduled to go to see both of the RWF um, museums there. But, of mm -hmm. course, our little friendly coronavirus sport that oh, one. Oh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> sadly. Yeah, in fact, uh, I, I remember the last time I went... Um, where was that? I, uh, not Avalon, but I think I went there before for a, for a customer meeting, and uh, I uh, James Kitely was was again kind enough to show me around the museum and you know kind of share all the the tidbit info you know uh, that that he has. He's he's got like like even though his his brain might be you know this size, but I think he's got like information like around like this size in, in there. He's got a tired us up in the head. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, somehow he kind of packs it in there. But yeah, that, he, he was kind enough to show me through the, the whole museum and all that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Well, if yeah. You, next time you make it back to Perth, let me know. Well, I'll take you down and show you our local museum, which you probably saw a few sh um, shots from the live stream I did the other day about that. Right. So it's, it's nowhere near as impressive as some of the other stuff out there, but it's still pretty cool to see some of there. I mean, it's got a, a real live Lancaster there, which is pretty amazing. Oh, cool. So, cool. yeah. So, all right, mate. Well, look, um, uh, now you mentioned briefly you had a couple of books. Um, so I just thought mm. I'd show people that. If you hang on a sec, I'll just find the right page to go to. Right. I got to figure that one out. Um, where is it? I have to put the glasses on, I'm afraid. Not yeah, no worries. It's just wonderful being blind <laughs> or half blind. Here we go. So I know you um, you you recently released this one. So things with wings one, right, is available. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So uh, like I was a uh, long time again. Like I'm I'm, an, I'm like again like trying to create books and all that stuff is like not you know first nature to me. Mm -hmm. It's not even second nature. I have to like really really you know think hard. So I was like going through like, okay, I, I need to make a book, but then I was just cycling through, okay, what theme should it be? Um, should it be like Warbirds or should it be like, you know, contemporary or should it be like, like the, the latest stuff or just like air to air or, you know, ground or, you know, whatever it is. And I was just like, just going through them, like, as uh, you know, we, we serve the channels, right. Uh, on, on TV mm -hmm. and like really not making any sense out of it. And then, so I was like, why am I like working so hard to trying to, you know, get a theme? Like, why can't I just, you know, just random, you know, uh, I'll just throw a random, uh, you know, series of shots and try to come up with the background story on, you know, what happened, like, mm -hmm. you know, so it's not, uh, the things with wings, uh, it's, it's, it's a book. It's not about, uh, like you won't be able to find like, okay, information on an, uh, on an F4 Phantom or F4 E or, you know, whatever the aircraft itself. But it's just a background story on, you know, hey, what happened? Uh, you know, how did I end up? Uh, was there anything interesting that happened uh, in that? So some of those are like, you know, um, anyone uh, who doesn't even, uh, you know, need to know, uh, you know, like F-16s or, you know, F-4 Phantoms or, you know, whatever it is. It's just a general, uh, you know, things, uh, kind of stories, if you will, um, yeah. you know, just thrown in there. So like, I think the first page, uh, so yeah, this was uh, the shoot that I did last year uh, with the uh, aviation photo crew in Greece, right? So I went to Greece there and we had the, the French, uh, the Patrol de France uh, uh, flying over the Acropolis, which was like a, a, a great thing. Yeah. Uh, this was my first air-to-air -air shoot uh, with the T6 Texan. 
uh, how did I get that shot, right? The A10 with the flares and all that. So kind of background stories on, you know, right. how it happened. So it's kind of like in in the hard uh, like a, a hard book uh, uh, edition as well as e-books. Uh, it's now, available on Blurb, how, it's available on Apple Books as well. How big is the physical book? Uh, it's not uh, it's not big as such. Uh, it's it's kind of a thin uh, book. Mm -hmm. uh, Basically, like I, I made it more for the electronic uh, version. So that's okay. Little, yeah. So uh, that's why I kind of kept it, you know, to a small, um, you know, uh, just like some pages. I I don't remember how many pages, but I think I uh, saw it said. I think it said 30, 36 pages from memory. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so that's what the thing is. So yeah, that's that's uh, you know what happened on on, on the background of this book. Okay, cool. So it's just a random, you know, collection of shots uh, with some background story on, you know, what happened. Yeah. What's the background story on that? Don't know how to get back out of here. Let's... I can just close the window, I guess. Um, no, I don't think it is. Or, or the tab. Maybe. Let's try that. No. Okay, never mind. We will get... Uh, there we go. That's the one. Yep. Okay, cool. So you can buy it in PDF or ebook format, and you can also buy it in um, print as well, correct? Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if and anyone's interested. It's also on Apple Books, I, I guess, as well. Yeah, so Kindle, Apple, and so forth. So that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, anyone who wants to go and check that out, just Google Things with Wings 1 and put in Blurb, which is where you sell it from. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. So, um, and I think you said uh, in passing to me that you, you were working on another book. Was that right? Yeah, so just recently, like a couple of days ago, I got this, uh, like, originally that was the plan, uh, but it didn't work out. Uh, but then I'm going to go ahead with, with the plan anyways. Mm -hmm. Is uh, last, no, not last year. Last year was 2019. 2018, uh, I worked with the 64th uh, Aggressor Squadron in Nellis. And yeah. trying to you know document some of you know day in the life of those guys, and I came out with a with a book on on the 64th aggressors called uh, Bandits of uh, what was that? <laughs> it's, it's it's a blur right now. Uh, yeah. Bandits of uh, huh? Uh, I don't know. I I I I I forget the name. Yeah. But it was you, basically you, on the, you can the send me a picture of the cover. I'll stick it in the, the video. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 64th aggressors. So yeah. at that time, uh, uh, the CEO of the 18th aggressors, uh, he was there and he saw the book and he's like, hey, can you do the same thing for my squadron? Mm -hmm. And so we started off with that idea, but it didn't go anywhere. Uh, but I still came, like went to Alaska to document, you know, the, a day in the, in, in the life of, you know, of a, of a blue fox pilot, right? Yeah. Um, and then I got some good shots. I got great interviews. Uh, the, the, the crew was like really, really helpful. Uh, especially uh, my my contact there, he was like awesome, uh, you know, in trying to help me out. Mm -hmm. So I got some good material. I've got some great shots. I've got some uh, you know great uh, text as well as as far as the the interview goes. And all that got published in Air Force's monthly uh, okay. magazine. Uh, that was a two part series. Uh, I I thought the the editor will just you know try to compress everything into one article and then go out with that. But I think he, he liked that whole thing so much that he went with a two-part series uh, on, on the 18th aggressors. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to kind of, you know, get uh, the same kind of text, uh, maybe some a bit more, and then, uh, uh, you know, try to make a book of all the other shots that couldn't go into the articles. Okay. Uh, but I just like, and, you know, kind of present it uh, to the aggressors. Yeah. But uh, that's the one thing that I'm kind of, uh, you know, looking forward to working on. Okay. So that, that would be a new book somewhere at the end of the year, I guess. All right. Sounds good. I um, Is that going to be a much bigger one? Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm probably going to go for a, for a good, you know, lay flat uh, kind of, you know, uh, the, the, the type of the book. Yeah. So that way, like it, it doesn't have that, you know, center of the page going into the, into the kind of, a yeah. center, whatever they call it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's like trying to get a, a good, you know, quality uh, of the book and then, you know, try to go out with that one yeah. instead of like, just a normal book, right? And it's like, like you've used Blurb there. I've used Blurb to publish a couple of books before as well. So they give you lots of options for that kind of stuff. Right, and, uh, exactly. Yeah. Certainly a lot easier to do that now than it was 10 or 20 years ago if you wanted to publish a real book. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. So, so cool. I'm just going to take advantage of that stuff and then uh, I just... 
for me the the good thing is i i have like the, the materials there i just need to you know put it together yeah uh, in that book so sure okay so if anyone wants to find out any more anything more about you or check out any of your other photos what's the best thing to do go to your facebook page i guess yeah facebook page uh that's at like facebook.com slash uh kap uh and then on instagram it's uh kedar's clicks so it's k-e-d-a-r-s c-l-i-x right those are the the handles that i have yeah so that's you and do you post more on your kedar is it kamaka is that how it's pronounced yeah 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 yeah, kamaka. yeah with facetime or do you post more on the uh the aviation photography one on yeah, so the aviation photography, like I have like a, a weekly team that goes on there, uh, and then I you know kind of take. So in this week, you obviously have the the P40 Warhawk. Uh, that's the theme that's that's going on uh, right now. Yeah. So this was a shot of the Kavanaugh Flight Museum's uh, P40. You know, just you were like right there, head on. You know, but, I just kind of like that angle. So how, the, how on earth did you get that angle? <laughs> that's an amazing shot. So we were, I think, in a, if I remember right, yeah, we were in a caribou. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've, actually, know, I've actually flown in a caribou. It was the worst plane flight I've ever had. I nearly threw up. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, the, 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 the Kavanaugh Flight Museum guys, they have, uh, they have a, a caribou, which is a, a veteran of the Vietnam War. So the back can drop down, right. Yeah, so the yeah. back hatch down, and then you are like right there flying, so... That's, so yeah, so on the photography page, it's more about like themes of uh, themes. every week. Yeah. Uh, so and um, uh, on my regular page, I just post whatever the, the latest that I you know worked on. So that's out of uh, Avalon. Yeah. There's another yeah, FaceTime shot. Yeah. So I I, so, know, I now know to look for that with you as your signature shoot move, as it were. <laughs> so. Uh, okay. Yeah, cool. The, the, the scooter. Yeah. yeah. So that that's one where they can catch me. Okay, and then, awesome. uh, Instagram as well. And with your photos, do you, um, if anyone wants to buy them or have prints made for them, do you offer anything like that as an option? Yeah, so uh, if if you go to the SmugMug page that I have, uh, it's uh, kedark.smugmug.com uh, or kedar, I think it's just kedar.smugmug.com, not k. Smugmug.com. And that should, yeah, there you go. Okay. All right. And so, so yeah, they if, can browse, yeah, they can browse to air shows and then they can go through all the lot of stuff that I have. And then, they so if, they, if they want to buy a, a photo or do you do prints or just photos? Yeah, I think uh, they, they do a whole lot of other stuff, uh, prints and uh, metallic prints or ah, canvas cool. or you know, whatever. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Oh, check that out, viewers. Uh, Keda.smugmug.com. Definitely worth looking at. I didn't even know about that one. So yeah. I remember seeing some of your pictures. This is the, is it, it's the F-82, is it? Or uh, the, the XP-82, in fact. It, it was the second prototype that they built that, that, that flew. Right. Uh, and I think uh, it's Tom Riley, if, if I'm not mistaken, who really painstakingly, uh, you know, restored this uh, uh, flying, you know, Again, it's it's one of a kind in the world. Oh. Um, it's still flying. Yeah, it's but, beautiful. Yeah, it's a great restoration by by the crew. Yeah. So, alrighty, awesome. Well, let me get rid of the screen share. So, well, mate, look, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on and have a chat to me. Much that was great. And um, as I said, uh, next time you get to Perth, give me a yell and I'll um I'll take absolutely. you on a tour of the museum and you can tell me some more fun stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like uh, especially these days, right? It's more about like virtual meetings. Well, uh, yeah, I mean. Well. Look, I, I, I was hoping I could maybe get to New York at some stage for the F-14 50th celebration, but which oh, is yeah. now scheduled for, I think they said April, but I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get out of the country by that stage. So mm, it's, okay. um, it sucks, but it is what it is. So. Yeah, exactly. Like that's what, like it, it's, it's been a lot of, I think, uh, since obviously the last shoot in Madras, but it's been like almost months that I haven't like had face-to-face, -face, you know, conversations with just friends, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's becoming a luxury right now. Yes, I know what you mean. I mean, we're we're not too bad here in Perth. We managed it really well, so we can still go. We can mm -hmm. go out and we can go to restaurants and all that sort of stuff now. But yeah, I mean, three months of not being able to go out and 
just have a meal with a friend was a really weird right. and, and not so enjoyable experience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like all the social stuff is it's great, but yeah, what's what's face to face is face to face. Like you can't, you know, take it out of the equation. Yeah. I think I read somewhere, somebody said, if you'd have predicted this, you would have bought shares in Zoom because the, price, the share price went nuts after this all started. Right. <laughs> right, exactly. So, yeah. There's a whole lot of uh, companies doing the virtual meetings right now, right? Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. All right. Well, mate, thank you very much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll chuck this up in the group and on YouTube at some stage. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. So. Perfect. Have All a nice right. one. Yeah, good to talk to you. Yeah, same here. Have Bye. a nice one. Take care. Stay safe. Yep. Let's do it, I get off.